Ahoy hoy. Now you may have noticed last Thursday was a You're Wrong About video, and if you weren't paying attention to, I think, last Tuesday and last Thursday's video, where I mentioned that my schedule was changing just a little bit, uh, I'm now doing two You're Wrong About videos, but we're doing them on Thursdays now. We're going to keep the uh, r slash dank memes from Site19s for Tuesday, and then that leaves me with a Tuesday free to figure something out. Show. We're not doing two r slash dank memes uh, at the videos. I think two weeks is enough to co to collect enough memes for that to work. Now I write for the SCP Wiki. This is a given. This is part of what drew some of you to my channel in the first place. Uh, and sometimes I post stuff and I thought, well, why not read that stuff on the channel? I don't do readings generally. I used to do more readings. I stopped because I just figured that wasn't my niche. But this is stuff I wrote specifically for the wiki, and I thought, you're here for me. Let's listen to some of the stuff that I've written. So, let's get started. Everyone knew my Uncle Roy was a maniac, a brawler. There was nothing he loved more than to get into a fight with another man. And I suspect he loved that more than me, but he cared for me since I was five years old. It was a weird childhood. Uncle Roy's brother was buried somewhere in Arlington, Mom would pass in and out of my life from time to time, and she'd mostly show up sober, and when she left, well, if she ever said goodbye in the first place, it was always with glassy eyes. I think she broke Roy's heart once or twice in there too, but he never let it show. And all through this, he'd be the one to make sure I was ready for school. He'd be the one to make sure my homework was in my backpack, and he'd be the one to make me a snack for break. And he'd wait for me at the bus stop and with me in the mornings at the bus stops. And while we were waiting for the bus, we'd talk about our favorite wrestlers from TV until the bus came. He'd give me a big hug, and then he'd put up his fist and say, Give him hell, kid. When I was seven, he found out I was bullying some smaller kids. He sat me down, and he explained that fighting was fun, but it needed to be a fair fight. I didn't understand really the difference. And he said, that what I should do is wait for those kids to get bullied again and then fight the people doing the bullying. He said that would be more fair and that would be more fun. And turns out he was right. And I made some friends for life along the way. Roy worked during the day as a guard at a fancy rich guy's club. And he never talked about his job and I eventually learned not to ask. At night, he used to make money on the side in unsanctioned fights. As I got older, so did he. And pretty soon, he had to give that up. And I started wrestling in junior high, and instead of fighting other people, he would come and watch every match. I think that cooled his itch just a little bit, but it was always there, because he still got into fights every once in a while. I mean, the cops in town knew his name and address, and most of the time he'd just get dropped off at the house. But he'd come home, black and blue and bloody, but whole. And he refused to go see a doctor, even the one time when he clearly broke his wrist. Now, he'd spent too much time in his head thinking about his mom and dad, my grandparents. And they'd both died of cancer. And he used to tell me oh, they were fine, then they got checked out, and then they were dead in six months. He loved his mom. Loved his dad a little bit less. But he missed them both. And the idea that he'd go out the same way they did was kind of terrifying to him. So when I finally convinced him to get that cough checked out, and he got his diagnosis, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like he blamed me a little bit. The doctor told him he was in for the fight of his life, and he laughed about that. He was still sporting a black eye from his last actual fight. He stopped the doctor and told him he wasn't fighting cancer, and then the doctor nodded solemnly like he'd heard it all before and kept dumping out statistics and data and projections. It was small cell lung cancer, they called it. Already spread to most of his lungs. They said the prognosis wasn't good, but this form of cancer reacted well to treatment. They said Roy could fight it and he'd win. And the whole thing, I guess it hit Roy like a ton of bricks because it, it wasn't war. It was not evenly matched with it. There were no valiant last stands or grand battles. He was dying and he was trying not to die. But everybody wants it to be a fight if they think about it that way, a bout between two evenly matched opponents. Because if they think of it that way, then they think of it as a worthy opponent that we can conceptualize an after for. Knock cancer down to the mat, you get to count, and the referee holds up your hand in victory. And afterwards, we're cancer-free. 
Except that's not how it works, like at all. He'd go in for treatment and then the treatment would almost kill him. Chemotherapy is supposed to go after the fastest growing cells in your body. It's one of the best tools that we have to fight cancers, and especially small cell lung cancer. But because cancer isn't some outside opponent you're grappling with, chemo is actually a matter of poisoning your whole body and hoping the cancer dies before the rest of your body does. And we'd still sit and watch WWE every Thursday and Monday, but at first those were at home. And then later we had to watch them from the hospital room's TVs. And I'd sit there at his bedside from time to time telling him about the wrestling matches he'd missed out on. Because I was in high school now and then, you know, he pr made me promise not to quit. And I promised. I don't have words for what it was to watch him waste away, but the chemo worked. Pretty soon the prognosis turned from... Not good to one to five to 10 years. And they give you a kind of percent chance of recurrence out of certain years. He was looking at 50, 50 or so at 10 years and the cancer ended up coming back at three. This time around the chemo wasn't enough and I watched him waste the rest of the way away. And people still called it a fight and they'd give me their condolences, ask how he was doing. There's no easy way to answer that question for people. He's been on a ventilator for a few weeks now. Yesterday, a friend of his, Mr. Marshall from work, came down to say hello. I vaguely recognized him. He'd hung out with my dad more than once. And he mentioned how big I'd gotten since the last he'd saw me. I told him I was going to college on a wrestling scholarship, and he perked up. He asked if I was any good, and I told him I was the best. That was when Mr. Marshall told me why he was really there. He needed to find someone willing to fight for my Uncle Roy. Maybe... I could be that someone. A few days later, we locked down his hospital room and Mr. Marshall brought in some people. They chanted and this weird hole opened up in the wall. I walked through, fully dressed in the costume that I'd chosen. <laughs> My intro music was playing in the background and I walked down the ramp to the ring as what seemed like tens of thousands of screaming fans yelled my name. Cancer came down the ramp right after I did and, well, I'm gonna give it hell. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know down in the comments down below. And if you have suggestions for other types of videos I could do, let me know as well in the comments down below. Now, scroll down, hit the subscribe button, and then hit the notification bell next to that so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Or else. Or else what, I'm not entirely sure yet, but I'll think of something. Then, if you really want to support the channel, head on over to patreon.com forward slash dcimmerian, like everybody here on the screen already has, and especially like probably wizard and definitely not a scientist and Manuel Noltorp, who have both pledged $40 this month. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I'll see you all again on Thursday.